Hello and welcome. It is the uh, third day of uh, January 2019. My name is Derek and welcome to the Money Charts channel. All bets, trades of the like or following of strategies within each his own risk reward. And earlier, just quickly going over through non-crypto related charts. I looked at a few random uh, stock charts that were shown on Finviz. And I got lines in the uh, ticker symbol an M something. I'm not sure what the symbol is. Let's see if it'll come up in here. Well, it's Navios, whatever that symbol is. I don't even know what the code is. I, it's, I just searched it, it came up. It's what it is. The lines represent where the buy and sellers that I had came into place for starting in at 53. So the price is down like just your normal over 90% type of deal. One represented buy, two represented sell. So the market would go up 69, then down to 53 and 40, up to those key levels, a bunch of sells, and well, the game would play on buying and selling. And I was putting orders in, just putting lines in the spot, and if it hit, it hit. I've done this before several times. It's a lot quicker for me to do this without recording. I mean, there's a slew of buy orders as the 2008 market crash was coming into place. And then now the current fall has seen the price go from the last sell at 1709 down to buys at 11, 8, 6, 4 and a half, 377, 265, which means the last that I had done was put a sell order in at 543. Generally, what I was doing after buys, the first sale was much larger rate of ascent than the ones that usually followed it. But it worked out pretty good on a mathematical level. For the results of the trade using the base amount system that I've talked about, which means after every buy and sell, your your coin or your, your market against your base currency is always worth the same amount. In this case, I made it always worth $1,000. And within the rallies, it got up to profits of almost 1500 And then the decline, seeing it go down to a loss of 500 And then sweet rallies up to uh, profits of about 2700 And seeing your profits slip again all the way down to uh, be the 2008 market crash to uh, over 500 600 roughly. And then rallying up to about 23 and change back down to about uh, six and change up to a thousand profits so a market that has went down about 90 percent would be doubling in net profit albeit with great volatility saying yourself oh i'm double yet many periods ago many well in this case a few years ago at that time because this is spanning uh, oh, several years like well over a decade that you'd ha go from 23 change you're, you're down like 65% from this high. But that comes in volatility when you play for the big moves. And I'm using the, this uh, chart for the purposes of crypto trading. I'm going to remove these lines. There they go. And because such, I use the rake of 0.2%. I know in stocks, you have different trading fees, usually so much per trade. Meaning to do this strategy, you'd have to be a big game player to make the fees worthwhile. But as it goes, the movement of the strategy, if the market goes up, obviously, I'll always enjoy gains. Maybe not as much as just buying and holding and watching the these suckers go two, three, four, ten, twenty 10, 20 times higher and seeing your portfolio go up at the same rate. I don't get that with that strategy. For when we look at the full amount of this chart, and you see a market go from 50 up to 180. That means you'd be tripling your profits. So in the early runs, this should have got up to like 3,000. It never did. And that's of course because when you are selling the higher levels, maybe you, if you have 1,000 here, where you're going to sell here, you'll have like 600. Then up here, you're going to have like 100 or 200 depending of course on its volatility but that also means when it goes down you go down with a lot less of the amount of stocks or coins 
that you would uh, have within it. And ideally, these choppy markets like we see in Doji here. That's what it's ideal within this trading because every single time you have these up peaks, you're going to be selling, buying on the way back. And as we can see here, priced at 61 Satoshi, your gains going, starting back up here, you could be buying this at 220. If you would have bought everything up here and then you just bought and hold, you're down quite a bit. But you'd be profiting pretty well because every single time that these markets rally high, you're in sell mode and every time they go back and it just works out very, very well. So it works nicely on the choppy markets. And when they go straight down, like is the case back in here, when it doesn't have hardly any test above the 18 highs, then it's going to obviously be a loser. So to start buying something like Card Cardano or anything that's down five times its value is going to be making it very difficult in something like this to see profits. Because you'd be able to sell up here nicely and then everything you sell you're going to buy back because it reaches its previous low. Thus you'd be buying more. And from that point, you'd have maybe a, a tiny, I mean, these are just little volatile moves going from 988 to 1312. Uh, that's very easy not to get sells. And especially if, say, you're buying at, say, uh, 1100 and your next buy order is like 800 or something or 820. And then you may put your sell order at like 14 change. It hasn't hit yet. You'd still be waiting for quite a while just for one of those two moves to come into place. But when we look at this coin from the start, it meant that it had a huge move and that's what they do. It's a long wait at times and we're going through a big period with a lot of markets that you can say are overdue for a big move. And I say that because you can say an over, a big move is ready here. Well, it's overdue. It's going to remain overdue till it happens. So it's overdue here. It's overdue in here. Of course, it's overdue right now. And it'll stay that way till it's not. But when this thing was ready to go, it had a big move. Great selling here. A little bit of buying amongst this. But if we look at this more carefully, back uh, with less candles. And we'll do so via the four hour term time frame. So we're back in November of 2017. And we can see how the price would have went from 288 to 4. I mean, there's just that's so easy to sell that. How do you not sell unless you're going for monstrous like 2x kind of moves or higher when the market does that? And then we can see up here, back down there, so there's an intraday buyback or an intraday, I mean, intra period within this great rally that's going to be coming. We're going to take a look at all of them that happen. So there we go. Obvious major sell moments even for the long-term traders that wait for the 2x and 2.5 and 3x moves they're now getting active maybe you're getting multiple multiple sellers so the market just continues to soar up so there's the opportunity 1640 back to 849 so within the move there's a little bit of buyback opportunity some more that followed in December again. So if you, and I don't like, I hate to say that word. So I want to, that might be my, that might be my new year's resolution is try to say that as little as possible this year in these videos. And within this high of 1250, maybe there was some sell orders in here. Even so, either way, market has a beautiful up move. This correction, 1380 down to a thousand. There might've been a buy order in here for just okay volatility, even for 20, 15% moves. This correction here from 29.30 down to 21, possible little buyback in here. A great rally again after that sideways correction. This little movement here, 59.60 down to 47, possible getting a buyback, but it was generally all sales as we enter January the 3rd. Price did have some buybacks in here as you go 9,000 down to 42. As I sometimes will say, well, maybe sometimes you might sell, like maybe here you might sell back there. But when this decline happened, there was no denying it. There was buying down here after there was selling up here, regardless of where your sell orders were and all that decent volatility. And then, of course, the market would 
top out you have a little bit of moves here and there 37 up to 53 you want to pick away as many of those as possible but if you're playing for percentage moves of lower amounts you need more trades to get really good profits it can be difficult playing for like three four five six percent moves even ten percent may not be enough but there's a situation of all of the buying we'd be entering the april fools rally very soon here's a spot where it goes from 17 up so a little bit of uh, selling involved some buyback some selling there's uh, our april fools rally which creates many selling and buying opportunities selling in here buy back here and then selling all the way during this up run maybe you buy back here but you're gonna sell more nice retracement and the volatility is really what's key to this because from this point forward it's mainly been in that of a downtrend there's a situation here 2400 up to 3000 an opportunity to get a sell you buy it back down here buy some more there's a little sell opportunity if you're buying in at say 2000 and you're looking for 17 percent moves then 2000 17 percent on 2000 would be like 300 and change and or uh excuse me 2300 and change rather and that would have been a sell order definitely buying back selling up on top there and well as we move this to where we stand today you get the idea of, of its volatility, even in spots like this where the market has these, the, uh, this line go up to 1150, which means that's what it was bought up to. And then it comes back down to 1006. Not the greatest of retracements. However, it's still greater than 10%. And when you look at the grand scheme of everything within just looking at the daily, when if your lowest buy order was say even like 925 then it would work out to me you would have either already sold near these highs or your seller still might be coming but in being patient with the moves realizing that this is a long-term game gain and the strategy will continuously pay off profits long term as long as a market doesn't continuously go straight down as the opening chart as whatever the code happened to be shown an example of something going down 10 times over a good amount of period movements and thus still a profit now use the word period movements because it was about 13 or 14 years it's just that Markets and stocks move a lot slower than cryptos generally do. So 15 years in the stock market could be like three years or four years of movement in the crypto trade. And it's all about how many trades back and forth you can get given its volatility with amongst the uh, trading lately has been quite low. It was quite low in here too before everything got going. And that's what happens. It changes. And it goes on and it it does its thing and that is when markets go up they go up really fast great rates of ascent all these major x moves and that's why i trade this way it is simple and i can use quote unquote extra skill within a what i consider a very simple but very good profitable base strategy in executing where's good spots to put buy and sell orders based on fibonacci key levels and even the order books within the actual trading sites itself and in doing so i feel i give myself a very good edge amongst the trading game thank you for tuning in and have yourself a good day Bye bye